Azul, next questioner is Sheila from Birmingham. Sheila. Hello. Yeah. I'm Sheila from Birmingham. I'm a, I'm a Christian brought up in the Church of England faith. As a little girl, I always believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Um, taught in our Holy Creed at the Church of England Church, we say, born of the Virgin Mary. So biologically, I've always believed that Jesus was the Son of God. I believe, you believe, that Jesus was a prophet of God. Please could you explain why we have different meanings? You see, it is you who owe an explanation, not, my, not I. Because anything which is contradictory to human understanding and nature is to be explained. If somebody raises his eyebrows against that so-called mystery, it is not he who has to explain. I believe in normal human birth. And I believe that even when the species change, a crossbreed is impossible. You can't mate a goat with an elephant and expect half a child born bearing half the characters of elephant and half the characters of the goat. But what about the difference between God and material things here on earth? Mary was made of matter. She was as much human being as any other person. So how can one conceive the child of God being born in the uterus of Mary? And who participated to what extent? All the scientists know, and now it has become, I think, common knowledge everywhere that half the chromosomes, chromosomes are provided in the childbirth by the female and half by the male. So the Mary was with only half the chromosomes. And half the chromosomes can make a freak of nature but not a man. Other half of the chromosomes, where did they come from? One can say God is all powerful, I agree. But then it would be a creation of God. Father-son relationship is, an, is inconceivable. If God has natural chromosomes to his physique or his making, then of course one can extend the imagination into saying, somehow, although the difference was so big, we don't even know the number of, of, of uh, chromosomes carried by the gods, sperms or whatever you call it, but if there is something, I mean by way of argument, then it would be possible for us to believe that somehow God managed to bring about a union between a human sperm and a divine sperm. There is no such thing. So a miraculous birth can only be understood within certain limitations. And Jamaat Ahmadiyya believes that birth to be miraculous but not supernatural. Not supernatural to the extent anyway that God physically participated in it. If he did not, there are two possibilities. Either he spontaneously created certain chromosomes which were human chromosomes. Because chromosomes anyway cannot bear the characters of God. So half the missing chromosomes were provided by the creation of God and that appears to be supernatural but it is the maximum we accept, we can accept. <coughs> or God had created Mary like some different animals with a dual mechanism provided within her which got activated at one stage and uh, was responsible for the creation of that sperm which fertilized the ovum of Mary. Now in animal kingdom this is known and this is an established fact. In human beings no research is made because 
whenever somebody claims that I have not been touched by any man and the child is born, people oh, you know, we know, you know, that's all. No need to go further. <laughs> we understand, of course. So that is why previously in the history the research was not possible anyway. And now everybody takes it as for granted that girls meet others and things happen. But there is a scientific possibility of a child being born with both the sexes. And we know that some people are converted or their sex is fixed by operations, by surgeons today. Some, fe some say, some uh, such freaks go to a surgeon and say, I want to become a girl, please remove my male parts. And uh, the operation is done and suddenly the boy begins to grow with all the manly characters. And the vice versa also happens. <coughs> So some sort of that thing might have happened within Mary and it is an established medical principle that once male or female mechanism becomes activated then the other subsides and dwindles out. Both can not develop simultaneously with full growth. So I believe according to the description of the Quran that something like that must have happened to Mary because the Quran is a very strange and very profound book it has to be studied with care when Mary expected a child obviously she was expecting the child to be a male because it was the custom of the temple never to accept a woman, a female, as a servant of the church, a priestess, always male members. So she understood that God knows the practice and when I say I want a child who will do this and that and that, God would know that I mean a boy, although she didn't say it in so many words. But according to the Quran, when the child was born, she expressed her utter surprise. Oh God, I have given birth to a woman, a girl. What is this? And the answer was, was not, yes, I know, this is it. Answer said, the answer was, you do, do not know what it is. Allah knows best. He knows what this is. Now, if the child was either male or female, then God should have described it as in a one single epithet or using uh, one single name for it, either male or female. But the Holy Quran is very strangely lies in between, <coughs> opening both the possibilities of something different, not entirely girl, a girl or a female character. Now, that is one thing. <coughs> and then when we come to the question of uh, Mary's conception of the child, Again, the Holy Quranic description is very profound and uh, must be studied in depth because the Holy Quran says <coughs> it happened in a manner that an angel of God was sent to her in the perfect likeness of a most charming, attractive man. Why this? And when he approached her and delivered the message of God, she thought it was a human being and she must have been agitated because God particularly says he was a very handsome man. God had turned, uh, God had turned an angel into the likeness of a very handsome and protective man. So she said, while he never demanded anything, keep away, I am a chaste woman. And then in other place she says, even my mother was chaste. Don't expect anything wrong. And then she said, how can a child be born unto me while I am chaste and I will not permit a man to touch me? The answer was, kazalik qala rabbu. Just like this, as it is. So that means 
that the Quran speaks both of the birth of Mary and the birth of Jesus Christ as not unnatural or supernatural births, but uh, rare births, miraculously controlled by God. So that is why we believe in Jesus to be a prophet of God and not a little son. Thank you.